Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This is going to be the very first review of a revolver that I have ever done. And there's a number of different reasons for that. So this video may actually be a little bit longer because there's going to be a lot of context and everything that I need to kind of articulate to make sure that you understand where I'm coming from. We are going to be talking about the Taurus 856 Toro. And this was something that was released at SHOT Show this year. Something I thought was fairly interesting as far as a defensive revolver goes. We'll talk about all of that here in this video. But one of the first things that I needed to tell you guys is this video is actually going to uh, caveat what I just spoke about on my podcast. If you don't know, I do run a podcast called the Live Laugh LARP podcast with my cameraman Hefe. We are on episode three, and in that episode, we specifically talked about revolvers and in why, in my opinion, revolvers suck. Now, it was kind of a change my mind type of situation, and I don't actually believe that revolvers suck. Everything that goes boom the first time usually should be something that could be used to defend yourself. But there are a number of different shortcomings that revolvers have that I try to talk about. So if you're interested in that podcast, I'll leave a link down in the pinned comment. It's also in the description of this video as well. The second thing that I wanted to talk about regarding this revolver is that Taurus did send this to me. I want to say a huge thank you to Caleb Giddings for getting me hooked up with this. Uh, I really do appreciate your support. I have not been the biggest fan of Taurus for a number of different reasons, but the fact that Caleb was like, hey, you know what? Try it out. Let us know what you think. I do appreciate it. So my question to you guys real quick is, what do you think about revolvers? Are they for you? Do you think that revolvers are something that you would carry primarily, or is it more of a backup role? Let me know down in the comment section down below. I will say that Taurus revolvers, by and large, have been, I think, uh, better than their semi-autos. Just my own personal bias, my own personal position, but I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent when it comes to this particular firearm. It's just one of those situations I got to put out there up front. Um, it was sent to me, but that shouldn't change my opinions of what's going on with this. I'm going to talk about the good with the bad to make sure that I'm fair to not only Taurus, but you guys as well. All right, so let's get into it. This is a bit of an innovation when it comes to revolvers. And why do I say that? Well, it comes with a red dot or doesn't come, it comes red dot ready. And a lot of you might jump into the comments and say, well, red dots have been on competition revolvers for years and decades and, and this is not a new thing. And you're correct, it's not necessarily a new thing. But coupling a red dot with a defensive revolver that's where the push forward into kind of the 21st century for revolvers is um, a bit new. And why do I say that? Well, in a lot of revolvers that do accept red dots, uh, first and foremost, they're not this compact. This is a defensive uh, revolver with a three inch barrel, uh, six round cylinder, what you would expect from a 856. It does have the trench style rear sight with the blade front sight, and it does have the ability to mount a red dot onto their plate. And that's the difference between your normal defensive revolvers with the Toro here. They have uh, drilled and tapped into the frame, allowing you to place the Taurus plate that comes with this revolver directly onto it. Instead of taking a red dot and putting it onto a mount that's then going to clamp onto a Picatinny section that is then going to bolt to a frame. When you got tolerance stacking there, that could be an issue uh, from time to time. So there is that aspect of it. But the question is, why would you put a red dot on a revolver? Well, let's be, let's be honest, let's be frank. There are not very many people that are younger than me that is going to be EDCing a revolver. Not to say that there isn't. There are plenty of people that EDC a revolver every single day. But by and large, 
most people my age or younger are going to be looking at smaller micro compact pistols such as the P365, the Hellcat, the G4X Toro from uh, Taurus, and the list goes on and on and on. Most people are not looking to a revolver for a deep conceal compact carry every single day. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're obsolete, but adding a red dot to a defensive revolver does open things up a little bit more to allow you to find the red dot and place rounds on target very quickly. So that is something I really, really did like about Taurus kind of looking at that kind of gap when it comes to revolvers and say, why don't we try this and see how that works? And I would say that it's actually kind of a winning combination, especially for me, I am getting a little bit older. I'll be 46 here in a couple of months. And uh, let me tell you, my eyes are really starting to become a challenge for me uh, day in and day out, especially with my day job. I'm sitting in front of computer screens regularly. So my eyesight's starting to degenerate. So being able to have a red dot on a defensive revolver is, I think, a good thing. Now, it does also provide a few different challenges as well. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. All right, so what's my shooting experience with this? Well, um, if I hadn't already mentioned, this is chambered for 38 Special, not 357. So um, running 38s through it, no problem whatsoever. Running it without the red dot, uh, I have had some challenges putting accurate rounds on target, anything over 10 yards with the trench style rear sight, with the blade front sight, and then trying to find a ammunition combination one Charlie that works well with this so to be point of aim point of impact has been a struggle Charlie's as well now, essentially what I have found is that this is going to be kind of a backup pistol for um, 10 yards and in uh, kind of New York reload style utilizing um, Hornady critical defense 110 grain plus P 38 special. That's what I've found works well with this. And um, at 10 yards and in, in, point of aim, point of impact without the red dot is not a problem. Now, add the red dot, that expands everything as far as types of um, ammunition that I can use, regardless if it is 110 or 135 or some of the heavier loads for 38 special as well. So that is one of the added bonuses of having a red dot is you can finely tune the ammunition that you want for this revolver. And that's something I really did like. What has been the carry situation like? Well, uh, not too many holsters out there available for this at the moment. I know that um, there are a couple of different manufacturers that are uh, either working on or have some available. Harry's Holsters is one of them. They sent me out their prototype for this many months ago, and it is no problem. I mean, it sits in there nice. It gives you a nice cutout for your red dot. Uh, it has a bit of a concealment wing here to kind of help push against your belt line to help conceal the pistol grip, the revolver grip a little bit. But that's kind of one of the issues with this particular setup, especially with the red dot is even though this is set up for concealment at like the appendix position or the one o'clock, maybe three o'clock, uh, even though this has a concealment claw to help hide your grip, the red dot is counteracting that. So it is also pushing out at the same time and really just, it, it makes it a little bit difficult for you to conceal this without printing. Now, at the end of the day, this is a revolver with a very, very heavy double action uh, trigger pull, just white you would expect it to be um, in comparison to like a striker fired pistol. Uh, so you can carry this in your pocket, no problem. And you don't have to really worry about it going off unless it's <laughs> something really intentional happening for it to go off. So there is that. Um, so I would say of the revolvers that I have messed around with, the double action trigger on this is a touch heavy, just a touch heavy. Uh, the single action, it has a really nice break and there you go. Um, maybe like barely a millimeter of creep on that single action, but uh, at the end of the day, 
it's what you would expect for a fairly budget revolver. Okay, so let's talk about some of the issues that I've ran into with this particular setup, and that's first going to be with the mounting plate. Um, it's been locked tight in, no problem, but when I first got this many, many months ago, um, I first ran into an issue with the red dot. The plate is set up for an RMSC footprint, and the only red dot that I had at the time was a Holosun 407K. And with this plate and that optic, 407 or 507Ks, the Holosun RMSC footprint style red dots, that caused a issue with trying to get it zeroed. Uh, even at 10 yards, I was still shooting at about four inches high with the elevation justified all the way down. I could not, I did not have any more um, elevation movement on that red dot. And I still was shooting uh, pretty high at 10 yards. So what's the solution uh, to that? Uh, luckily enough for me, uh, Lucky Gunner had already kind of done the homework on that and found that the Swamp Fox Sentinel was a perfect match for this with a few others as well. And um, so I just went ahead and jumped on getting one of the Swamp Fox Sentinels, put it on there, took it out to the range, and boom. Point of aim, point of impact, no issues with elevation. Uh, so that is what is going to stay on this from now on. And I'm... Um, really happy about that um, because I really like my 407k and I was let down that it didn't work well with this but it can go back onto my uh, p365xl which is where it had been and no problems there so there is that all right so let's dive into the use case for something like this uh, at the end of the day especially for me this is going to end up being a backup gun, uh, something that I can hand off to someone, something that I can, uh, you know, maybe toss into the glove box, uh, put on my hip for backpacking for bear defense or something like that, which might be a little underpowered, but that's kind of a use case for revolvers. Uh, backup or bear defense because you can really plus up the ammunition types uh, depending on the model of revolver that you're using. This specifically would be a truck gun, something that I could hand off to someone that I'm with that may not be carrying. Revolvers are pretty, pretty easy to use. You don't have to worry about safeties or anything like that. You just point and with this having a red dot, you put the thing on the thing and you pull the thing and that's the end of it. So uh, this would definitely be a backup or a pass off style uh, revolver pistol for, for me. Some of the things that I don't like when it comes about revolvers is the heavy triggers. I've been so indoctrinated and used to using, um, you know, anything from a Beretta 92FS, which yes, is a double action, single action style pistol, but uh, that trigger I think is a lot easier to use than this. Um, moving away from that and getting into striker fired polymer frame pistols um, has become a little bit second nature to me. So being able to carry something like a P365, 365XL, X macro, um, the P10C, which is in my rotation right now, um, a Glock or some of its variants, FN 509, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Those would be more apt for me personally to carry on an every say, everyday basis um, as a primary pistol, especially if I'm moving uh, into an urban area like heading into Kansas City to go see a game or um, you know whatever the case may be. If I'm going into a big city, I am definitely going to carry a double stack full-sized pistol, um, or at least compact pistol, like P10C, um, maybe a Glock 19, Glock 17, something to that effect. But I would have something like this as a backup. So you get into a tussle, you get into a fight, you're rolling around with someone. Uh, if I can't get into my primary EDC, I could have something like this, or maybe even a Smith & Wesson 638 that I can pull uh, and fire from from retention uh, which is you know up close 
I can put it up against someone, um, against a, another individual and pull the trigger and I won't have to worry about, most of the time, shouldn't have to worry about malfunctions, whether it be being pressed up against someone and moving it out of battery, don't have to worry about this, or anything getting snagged up in the action. Um, there could still be a situation where, you know, clothing gets in between the hammer and the, uh, the firing pin, but that would be uh, less likely in something like this, or even a Smith & Wesson 638, which we'll be talking about in another video. So that's kind of my stance, that's kind of my point of view. Got about 500 rounds through this, and it has, it has, done, it has done exactly what I've expected it to do. Um, you know, normally I'm pretty harsh when it comes to Taurus, but uh, so far so good with this, and we'll get some more rounds through it and see what else we can talk about when it comes to this type of thing. All right, so that pretty much covers it for this video. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. Thanks to Taurus to sending out the 856 Toro. I really do appreciate that. And to Harry's Holsters for getting me set up with the holster as well. Um, it's, it's done well. I think it's going to do well for a lot of people and for individuals who are having issues with their eyesight. That red dot really kind of elevates a revolver for an EDC setup, whether it be primary, backup, or whatever the case may be. That's up for you to decide. But at the end of the day, swing on by, check out the podcast, Live, Laugh, LARP. Again, that information is down below. Really do appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all. And in the pants. Oh, you're, you're pointing at your junk. Oh, my God. You're going to shoot off your dick and berries. There. Okay. Shoot, you ready? Yep. Stand by. Threat.